Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Living Large Camping. I'm Connor. I'm Amelia, and Barkley's over here. <laughs> and today we are going to do a comparison video of a four wheel camper versus a Cirrus truck camper. So I think we're going to go ahead and get that started. So here we have a 2019 Cirrus New Camp 920 on a 2012 Ram 3500 with a 6.7 diesel. And here we have a 2006 four wheel camper Eagle shell model on a 2016 Ram 1500 with a 5.7 Hemi. Okay, well here's our camper and we're gonna give you guys a little bit of the tour. We have these really nice stairs that fold in and out. You guys have probably seen Connor do it a thousand times, but we love them. Oh, and then we have a door that has a little bug screen, which is really nice to keep it cool inside. Okay, so if you come in here, we built two cabinets um, because we were very limited on storage since we do have the shell model. So in this one, we have Connor's clothes, my clothes, coffee essentials, and toiletries and stuff like that, and then grill and plates. And then in this one, we have pots and pans, all that stuff, and cooking spices, oils, and propane. And then down here, you see these tiny little guys. Um, we found some also tiny little baskets to put cords, medicine cabinet. That one we don't use because the bench holds on to it. And then over here, miscellaneous items as well. But it's perfect. Gotta use every bit of storage here. We also made these cushions, if you can see them. It's a really nice lounge spot when the bed is put away. All right, so in addition to all of the storage space, we have a Dometic five gallon cassette toilet. We also have a Mr. Buddy heater and a fire extinguisher, but we don't really use this anymore. Uh, we have another propane stove here. Back here, we have our WeBoost mounted. The antenna is on the outside of the camper. We also have two larger drawers for shirts. And then over here is what runs everything in the four wheel camper. This is the Goal Zero Yeti 3000X. It's about 250 amp hours of battery storage. And without charging it at all, we can last for around two weeks in this camper setup. So pretty awesome battery. It's a little overkill right now, but we are very happy that we have this size. So right now we have the camper in sleep mode, which means the bed is pulled all the way out. Uh, the camper is pretty narrow, so we can't sleep east to west. We have to sleep north south. So now it's time to turn the bed into lounge mode. All right, so now we have the camper in lounge mode, and that means all the bedding stays up here for now, and then we have these nice cushions for us to actually be able to spend some time in here on bad weather days or whenever we need to get some work done. Um, these cushions have been great. I can actually lay down flat, which is nice. Amelia fits over there, and Barkley usually sits here in the middle. Four-wheel campers have these windows that Velcro down. You have the main window, and you have the actual bug screen window. Um, they are very nice. You can get an additional thermal pack from the factory on these, which we wish we had for hot days and cold nights. But either way, these are great and it allows for a ton of airflow in the camper. We also have a max air fan that we installed whenever we resealed the roof. And that is a great way to circulate some air in here on those warm summer days. So now it's time to talk about all of the pros that are associated with the four wheel camper, especially the shell model. So first things first, this thing is low profile. If you can tell here, it does not stick out past the width of a full size half ton truck. 
and when the camper top is popped down it only sticks up about a foot above the cab of the truck overall height on this without the antenna is seven and a half feet tall so that means we can still fit in parking garages and it is so much easier to take this thing down tight narrow trails so the eagle model is made for small mid-sized trucks such as the toyota tacoma ford ranger and the Chevy Colorado, which means it does not take a lot to have this camper fit in the back of your truck. Almost any truck can carry it. Either way, this is a very lightweight setup. The sticker on the camper says around 600 pounds. I think we're closer to 850 pounds with all the renovations and additions that we have added. But either way, that is incredibly light for a truck camper. And since we got a shell model camper, we were able to turn the inside of this into whatever we wanted it to be. That means we got to build the cabinets we needed, add the cushions that we wanted to, and just make this camper exactly what we were looking for. Another big pro on this camper setup was the overall cost. We found this 2006 four-wheel camper for sale for just over $6,000, which seemed to be very reasonable considering it's an all aluminum frame, very lightweight, and we were able to do whatever we wanted with it on the inside. So that's a big pro. It'll fit on any truck. It doesn't have to be a Ram 1500. And overall, we think we got a great price on this camper. Even though the Ram 1500 has a V8 Hemi engine, with this camper setup, we are still getting 14 to 18 miles a gallon, which right now seems very fuel efficient. And we are extremely happy with that given the current gas prices. Part of the reason this camper is so fuel efficient is because the top drops all the way down to right over here. But so far we have found that this setup is incredibly easy whenever we pull into camp and leaving as well. So no complaints there on setting up and taking down the four-wheel camper. All right, so I'm going to hit the cons. And the first one for us is storage. Because we had the shell model, we were lucky to add storage, but we really only have these two cabinets and then that drawer. And because of that, we have these bags over here with more of our clothes, cups, laundry, and all that stuff. And we have more in the truck. So that's definitely a con. Okay, so I'm coming in here to film one of the cons because it is only applicable <laughs> to me. Amelia is 5'6". I'm about six foot two, and whenever I stand up straight, I hit the top of the camper. So I hit this latch almost every night, and I hit this on the Max Air fan every day as well. So that's a huge con for me because I'm always like three inches crouched and that's gotten a little old. Okay, so another con is that we have no kitchen in here, which would be really nice for bad weather days or anything, or too hot, too cold, whatever it might be. That would be really nice. So that's definitely a con for me. And also with bad weather days, because of the canvas, when it's super windy, it shakes the entire place. So that's definitely a con because it wakes you up scared in the middle of the night. <laughs> and the last con is having no bathroom, just like no kitchen. When the weather is bad, it makes it a little difficult. We do have one, but you have to pull it out. And you know, lock the door so no one walks in on you. <laughs> So obviously these cons aren't the end of the world, but overall we have really loved this camper setup. And I think right now it is perfect for us mm -hmm. and what we're doing and is just such a great home right now. Yeah, we absolutely love it. We're just showing the cons because got to compare it to the one next to us. So now it's time to take you over to the neighbors, check out the Cirrus 920 truck camper and see if bigger is actually better when it comes to truck campers. All right, so this is my dad, Chris. We look nothing alike, we act nothing alike, and obviously we are nothing alike because we both live in truck campers full time and we wanted to show off his setup right now. Hey, live in large camping YouTube nation. Do these guys a big favor. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and leave them a comment. They love hearing from everybody that watches their videos. Funny story, as Sarah, my stepmom, will admit to, is we actually both bought our truck campers on the same exact day. Amelia and I drove to Fayetteville, Arkansas. Yep, and we drove to Enid, Oklahoma from Dallas to pick it up. Um, these things, like Connors, are kind of a unicorn. So when you find one for sale, if you're in the market, uh, you better go get it. And it just happened to be on the same day, which I think is hilarious. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Yeah, so as Connor said, we sold our home in November, sold a bunch of our stuff, a bunch of toys, and moved into the Cirrus 920 truck camper 
pretty much full time. We uh, mooch dock off some family occasionally in various places around the U.S. But here we are in beautiful Colorado, and we love our Cirrus. Um, it's a big, heavy camper, which Connor might say is a negative. It's one of the lighter, long bed truck campers. It's a non-slide. Drive weight's about 3,500 pounds. Fully loaded, you're about 4,500 pounds. Went across the scales with the uh, big beast of a truck here, and we're at 13,300 pounds with truck and camper fully loaded. We're about 18,000 pounds when we flat tow our Jeep. And we went over the scales in our setup a little while ago, and we're about 7,800 pounds. So almost half. So I win. I'm twice as good. <laughs> All right, so now it's time to give a tour of the outside and the inside of the Cirrus 920. So real quick, starting on the outside, they do have this great garage box for all of their random items. And then on top of it is the generator that we had to borrow the other day because we ran out of power. But let's go inside and check it out. <laughs> So coming in here on the driver's side, we have the kitchen. They've got a Dometic sink with the flip down lid. They have a two burner propane stove. Microwave convection oven. No actual oven, which is great because you have tons more storage. Fridge and freezer combo. So they do have a full queen size bed with tons of storage on the sides and beautiful windows throughout the whole bedroom area. This view is the best. So one of my favorite parts about their camper is this dinette here with this awesome window. And that's another big con for us is whenever we're sitting in our lounge space, we cannot see out the windows because they stay on the bottom side of the shell. And whenever you're sitting there, you're kind of in between the top windows on the canvas and the bottom windows on the camper. But either way, we have had many great nights playing cards, eating dinner, and just hanging out in here while the weather has been bad, and we love the dinette area. The other absolute pro to this place is they have endless storage. They have all of these cabinets up here, everything down below, here, by their bed, even more over here, some hanging closets, so endless. <laughs> the other thing that they have here is a full wet bath, so... It has a door even. And if you come inside, they have a toilet and shower and a mirror. All that good stuff. Is that a necessary on your next camper setup? Yes. <laughs> so we love their Sears mm -hmm. New Camp 920 camper. It's been so much fun being able to travel with them the last week and get to spend some time in here and just spend some good quality time with them. <laughs> yeah, it's been really nice, very spacious, and fun beating them in cards. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's time to go hear their pros and their cons with their setup and see if this camper is any better than ours. We'll see. I don't know. So now it's time to hear what your pros and cons are of your camper setup. Absolutely. So I think our biggest pro is ease of setup. I mean, it really is as simple as backing into a camping spot, unlocking the door and putting the steps down. Now, my wife might tell you it's a flushing toilet, but we won't talk about that on this video. Uh, some of the geeky things I like are the construction. It, no wood in the walls. It's all aluminum and composite material. Um, also like the Aldi heating system. It's very quiet, very efficient. It does the heat and also does the hot water. We have neither of those, so we can't even compare them. <laughs> so I know there are endless pros about this truck camper setup, but I want to hear from you if you can search your brain and find any cons <laughs> with this awesome setup here. Yeah, absolutely. There's a few, and one of them being weight. As we said before, 3,500 pounds dry. We're 4,500 pounds plus fully loaded. I've done a few suspension modifications to the truck. It handles great now. Um, another negative is the AC is really loud and also the built-in generator that runs off propane is not only loud but it goes through propane quick um, and I'd say the one final con that we would tell all the viewers out there is um, it's got a power awning on the other side which is a negative because it works sometime and doesn't work others it would be much easier if it was a manual awning and really they're up so high they're not real useful, um, so we don't use them much.
we don't have awnings. We don't have generators. We don't have an AC unit. We do weigh less than you, though. So, so I win. So he wins. I have more things. Is that how this works? He can hold more stuff in his camper. But now, either way, both of these truck camper setups are awesome. I would say yours is definitely more suitable for full time living. But if you're looking for long weekend trips, trying to get out in the middle of nowhere through trails, tight corners, everything like that, I think our truck camper wins there. Yeah, and as you know, if you're looking for campers, everything's a trade-off. And so you just have to find the one that fits for you and your lifestyle at the time and the one that checks most of the boxes. Yeah, so I wanna hear from you. Leave a comment down in the description. Which truck camper setup is better for you and why? Are you gonna be living in it full time and you need the creature comforts? Or would you rather have the bare bones, go anywhere you want, pop the top up every night and go from there? I think our four wheel camper is probably our best camper setup so far. However, it does have its limitations as a full-time home. So I want to thank you for going along, giving us this tour and hearing your thoughts about the camper. Absolutely. And we hope you enjoy. Again, destinations and detours, we will link it in the description below. If you have any comments or questions about either one of the camper setups, just let us know and we would love to hear them. Yeah, hit the subscribe button and the like button. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed the comparison and we will pick you back up next week. Everybody have fun camping.